Hello, and thank you for joining me. I'm Tim Botuk, and this is A Joy of Painting Middle Earth, a time when we come together to paint the most fantastic landscapes Middle Earth has to offer, and maybe we'll paint a scary one a time or two. That can be quite fun, you know. Now, I may not be the best painter in the Shire, but I do love it so, and I'd love for you to paint right along with me. So if you're ready, grab your paints and your brushes, and let's go on an adventure. Alright, thank you, thank you for joining me. We've got our canvas ready to go, and today we're painting on a white canvas, but we've prepared that by putting down that magic white. That's right, the way the blue wizard, Bob Ross the Blue, taught us how to do. He used to come to the Shire when I was just a small hobbit, and he showed us all how to paint once a week. Oh, and it was lovely. So we're ready to paint here. Now I've got my colors ready to go. I have some phthalo blue, some Prussian blue, some phthalo green, Van Dyke brown, ivory black, cadmium lemon, yellow ochre, bright red, and of course titanium white. I was forgetting the colors there. Now I'm going to go to this dark blue. We've got this canvas prepared, and this one's going to be a bit of a night sky we have in there, and this is a very dark blue here. But it'll mix with the white that we already have down. Now what are we painting today? Well, right when I was about to start, I wasn't sure what I was going to paint today, and I was baking some cookies, and I got a message from a friend of the show. His name's Kirk. And Kirk, he showed me he has a, a collection of my prints hanging on his wall, and I was so impressed. I said, well, Kirk, I'm about to paint, but I don't know what I'm going to paint. Do you have any suggestions? And oh, he had many, many suggestions, but this one he suggested, and it was two of my favorite characters from when I read Mr. Bilbo's tale, The Hobbit, as a small boy, and they were two of my favorite characters. Bjorn and Gwaihir the Eagle. That's right, he said, how about have them, having them on the Carrick token? So that's what we're going to do. And we have this nice nighttime sky here, coming in with a stale blue, just bringing this down. And we start at the corners where it'll be the darkest. Come up here. There we go. Let's come back to that, put some more on there. There we go, just using these crisscross strokes, starting at the corner, and if you have to put a big old hobbit foot on your easel to steady it out, go ahead and do that. But we got this. This comes in here, make sure you get it all in. There we go. There we go. Just this nice dark sky. We're just putting that in. Just make sure we cover it all. There we are. Sky is going to come down. There we go. Maybe we want that a little darker up top. So come back to our phthalo blue. Load that on the brush. And if you're going to come back in, just come back in in those corners and bring it down like that. There we are. Now we're going to have this down here. This will be, oh, we'll fill it in with some green and stuff. It's not really going to be water, but. Just cleaning off that brush, just cleaning that excess paint. This will just put a background that's dark down there and we'll go over it with some green. There we go. If you want to do water, that's a good way to do it. Now we're cleaning off our brush and odorless paint thinner. Uh, that's right. Just clean that off. And now I'm not going to beat the Sauron out of the brush on the easel because I'm inside the hobbit hole. And that would make too big of a mess. But I have a rubbish bin right down here, so we're just going to beat the Sauron out of the brush right down here. There we go, and that cleans off that brush. And then we can come back and smooth out these strokes. Just take those right out of the painting. Just lightly, lightly. There we are. Now we're going to have a moon up in our sky. I'm going to put a moon up there. So what we're going to do is I am just going to come to a one inch brush. I'm going to go into my titanium white. Now before, before I make a mess everywhere, 
I'm just going to put a few different piles of titanium weight there. That way, if I mess one up, I'm not messing the whole thing up. But I'm just going to come and I'm going to put this on this one inch brush. Just load that up into the brush there. And we're going to come up and we decide right here will be our moon. So what we're doing is we're not putting the moon in yet. We're just putting in that white that'll lighten up the sky. There we go. It just lightens it up. Now that brush is pretty dirty and we want to get more white. So we're going to clean that off in between. There we go. There we are. We just took that and got all that paint out of there. Now when you come back, you load it on, come right back up to that spot. We're trying to make that the brightest spot. And we just come out. We're just making this glow here. That's going to be a little bit brighter. Now to make our moon, we're going to go back to our days of being just a small Hobbiton school where we do a little bit of finger paint. So we just put a little bit of paint on our finger there. And we're just going to circle this in. Oh, you stick on there, paint. There we go. There we are. All right, so we're going to put some clouds in here. I'm just going to take, we're going to our, just our titanium white. Just taking this here and we're going to put some clouds in. Now we're not going to make these real big because this brighter part of the cloud is just the back side of the cloud. So we just put that in, put that in there. That's what's catching the moonlight. Now we wash that off. Come back, let's get some more of that titanium white. And we'll do another cloud here. Just circle that in. There we are. Maybe, maybe right up here. And we've got a lot of that blue on there. So that's mixing real quick, but that's okay because we're going to come back. We're going to come back with some midnight black on there. There we are just a few clouds here. Maybe we want one coming right here. Right here down just below the moon. Just below, there we go. Covering it a little bit. There we are. Now we have another blender brush. This one's just a little smaller. So this we're just going to lift just lift that up and then blend just that underside. And we're going to come back and put a little darker cloud right below this. So we just lift that up, blend that down. There we go. Now again, because this is at night and these clouds are a little closer, we're going to take some of that midnight black that has a little more purplish color to it. And we're going to come up and we're going to put right at the bottom edge of these clouds. This is just the bottom of the cloud. That's not getting much light at all. Just follow the shape of your clouds there. There we are. Just put that in.
and we'll blend these together. That'll make a nice cloud for us. Now you're picking up a lot of that blue, you just want to knock that off, that's okay. We don't have to wash the brush between this one, just sharpen that out. And we're going to come here and we're just going to march this across. March that across right there. Comes right up there. That's just that underside of the cloud there. There we go. Now let's wash off that brush. There we go. All right, now that we have that little blender brush again, we're just going to just make small circles and blend these clouds together. There we go. Very, very lightly on this one now. We're just doing it lightly. Come back right across here. And you notice I get a little quieter when I'm doing this. It's because these are quiet clouds. Softly flowing in the night. There we go. Or I'm talking quiet because I feel like I might mess this up and I'm trying to concentrate. That could be another part of it. There we go. That gives us our nice, our night sky there. That's what it does. Now we're going to come, the land, our horizon is going to be right up here. Now we're not too worried about this center spot. That's where, oh, most of our action is going to be, but let us, let's bring that sky down a little more so our horizon is not too high. There we go. Just those crisscross strokes. All right. Now, this side is the Misty Mountains. Those are going to go off, off to the west. We're on the western side of the Misty Mountains. Or the eastern side, so the mountains are on our west. I tell you what, I'll get it right one of these days. There we go. Just taking some of that, that ivory black there. And we're going to do some, some mountain ranges here. And we'll just say these mountains, oh, they're off back, back, back in the distance. So what we do is we just we're just going to put the mountain range in, just coming in as we come towards the edge. We're getting a little closer because those mountains are getting closer to us. Just pull those in. There we go. Getting a little taller here. Just making those peaks, press that. Paint right into the canvas, just pull it in like that. There we go, maybe there's something off there in the distance. Runs off there. We're going to have stuff right here, so we're not too worried about that. Oh, maybe they get a little taller right there. Just bring that on. There we go. It's been a while since we did some good mountains. And these aren't even that good mountains. Those are far away. We'll have to do a painting here where we have a good old big mountain range in there. But this is, this is good for right now. Yep, there we go. And we just go right off the edge there.
There we go. We want to make sure we get all that pulled in. There we are. Those will just go off into the distance. They just keep running along and along. Now, let's, we want a bit of a, a snowy but moonlit corner on there. So we're just going to get some of our blue here. We'll put it right there. Take some of this white. Mix that in. Might be a little too blue. We'll take all that white we can, put it right there and just mix some of that in. There we go. Pull that flat, flat out. Now, just grab the edge. And what we do, we're just going to come and we're just going to, we're just going to paint in some highlights on those mountains. There we go. Those are very far away. Not a lot of detail there. We start in the back, that way we can bring those mountains right in front. There we go. And you see, take some of that, just get more, a little more of that white on there, maybe. I'm right here. There we are. There we are. And one more right here. Just bring that down. There we go. Now it looks like those are floating in space. It looks like those are floating in space. All right. Let's get some green. We have this thalo green here. We're going to make some of our land, some of our trees and grass and things. Maybe touch a little bit of yellow in there. Just green it up a bit. It's going to be pretty dark because this is at night. So let's just come here. And these are the pine trees at the edge of those mountains. There we go. And you can just kind of bring those up in front of the mountains there. Some of them climb up a little higher. There we go. Just bring that in. And what we're going to do now, we're just going to fill this in with some color on this side and this side. And this, these night paintings, they work out a little better if you use a black canvas. I just didn't have a black canvas prepared today, so I decided to do this. So I decided to do this. I'm just going to fill this up. Fill that up right there. There we go. Let's do this. Let's just put the color in quick and then we can come back and we'll give it some texture. So we do that. Do that right there. Over this way is going to be Mirkwood. So we can just put a bit of that dark. That's going to be a dark forest over there. So here's our horizon line. Oh, but I thought, oh, maybe just a thought real quick while I'm thinking about it. What's way off that way to the north? Why it's the Lonely Mountain. So let's come. Let's maybe pull that out thin. There we are. Right back this way. We'll say we've got the Lonely Mountain. 
sticking up here. That might be a little tall for what we want. So let's try this. We're going to go to that small edge, that short edge there, and we're going to make a mountain right back this way. Just putting that in lightly. Maybe it comes a little taller. There we go. And that was just kind of an afterthought. That was just a bit of an afterthought. I thought, oh, wouldn't it be neat to put a mountain back there? That lonely mountain. So we're going to come here. Just get a little detail on there. Just a little bit of that blue and whitish color. Just to put on that mountain. There we go. There we are. Just as an afterthought. Not that we'd probably be able to see it from where we are, but, but we'll consider that. We'll consider that. Now just put that there and that's off in the distance. Off in the distance. Putting these trees. Now let's come to the fun part. We can work on these kind of details. Oh, let's put some more of that over here though. And you just kind of alternate some shadow, some details. All right, that's just kind of the backdrop to our drawing there. I'm just gonna clean off this brush. There we go. Just beat the Sauron out of it. That's right. All right. Now we've got this big Carrick rock. Let's put that in. Let's get some of this. We're just going to go to some of this rocky color here. Just scoop up some of those colors. We'll put them all in there. And now we're going to come this, this rock face. We'll just bring up this way. And this is the Carrick. That's right. Why was it called the Carrick? Well, that's what Bjorn called it. So he named it. He gets to say. That's right. He gets to say. We're just pulling that color right into the, pressing that into the canvas. Get some more. Just put that in. This is this is the main focus we have going on. Almost like a seat where you could come up and just look out at the world and see what was going on. Kind of like one of my favorite other places, Weathertop. That's right. Weathertop was a good watchtower. It was a good watchtower. And this hill just 
comes down this rocky hill that it is. We're just pushing that into the painting there. There is actually a stream or a, a bit of a river that ran around this. Now for the bottom here, since we're going all the way to the bottom, we'll just turn our knife over and pull it up. And maybe I'll put, oh, I'll put a stone right here. Right there. Just kind of giving it the shape you want. If you want to bring this down here. I like the idea that it maybe Maybe has a bear shape there, I don't know. I don't know, but that's what we'll do there. Now let's put a little, we can just highlight some of this a little bit. Just that part there. Maybe the ground here. And we'll come back to the bottom part of this. We'll come back to the bottom part. Now we're at the business of the painting. So we're going to come here. And as I like to do with my characters when I draw them in. Oh, I like to first draw the shape of them as a silhouette. And then if I decide, oh, I'll just keep it as a silhouette, I can do that. Or if I want to put details there, I can do that as well. So what we're going to have, we're going to have Gwai here, the eagle, right here. See if I can get maybe an eagle shape. Maybe the shape of an eagle who's perched up on the edge of this rock. Maybe his wings come back this way, hanging over the edge, so he can take flight at any moment. We're not sure the relationship between Gwai here. We're not sure the relationship between Gwai here and Bjorn. Maybe Gwai here is a little intimidated. Maybe not. Oh, he's a very powerful eagle. So we'll just put in this shape. Here. That bird chest that comes out. And maybe there. I think that's a good shape for an eagle. Just press that in. Hopefully I'm not in your way. And... Coming up here, let's put this head in. Just using the very corner of this brush. I'm using a filbert brush for this, just a half inch filbert brush. It's a good brush for doing some things like this. And we'll fill that head space in. We'll come back and put some details as best we can. You know that Timbo, Timbo's more about painting rocks and trees and water and things. These things can get a little tricky for me. There we go. And he'll have his talons as he's perched right here. And I think that's pretty good. 
we'll leave it like that for now. Let's, oh, let's go to our bear. That's right. We're going to, we're going to paint Bjorn as a bear today. Not as a man. I think he'd be in bear form when he talks to the eagles. So, maybe they're keeping their distance a little bit. Bjorn, maybe he's not so trusting of them. Let's see if we can do a bear shape here. Just coming. This will be his head. This will be his snout. Bit of a long neck on this bear. And let's see, his leg, those powerful legs, be right there. Maybe that back, that muscular bare back, that's right, right up this way. There we go, out, out to a tail. The bears have a small tail. And we're gonna come down and put this foot out like that. There we go. I think that's, I think that's a good shape for our bear. There we are. That other leg back there. And of course he has to have his ear there. There we are. Maybe this leg is out. as he gestures, as he talks. We don't know what they're talking about right there, but... There it is, there it is. Let's, we'll put some details in here now. We just want that. Maybe we'll use a smaller brush to do our details. But I just want to create that silhouette there. That's a good base to build off of. So now you can let this dry. You could let this dry and come back to it later and it might be a little easier to fill in some details on there. But oh, Timbo, oh, Timbo is just gonna press forward and we're gonna do it all right now. But just know that you have that option. You can let this set for a day or two or maybe even a week and it'll be almost dry. And then you can put the details in. But we're just gonna go right ahead and do it right now. All right, we've cleaned that brush. Let's say... Maybe we're just gonna take one of these small brushes. I know usually I use big brushes, but we'll do one of these small ones for today. Let's go to some of this Van Dyke Brown. That might be a little too brown to see, so we're gonna come to some yellow ochre. And these are going to be very similar in color, these two creatures. These two creatures will be very similar in color. Gwai here with his brown fetters, and Bjorn with his brown fur. I think that's good. We'll see if this will stick. If it can't stick, we may have to thin it out a little. But we'll see, we'll see. So... We're just going to put in some feathers. Still not sure how I'm going to do the beak. I haven't thought that all the way through. But 
Again, with that paint down that's pretty thick, it's a little more difficult to put it down. So we just want that. We don't want it too bright. But we can use this. Just putting in those fetters. Now, what I'll do is I'll go to a darker, a darker brown maybe to fill in back here. That'll be a little darker, especially right in there. There's probably a bigger brush I could do this and it would go faster. But that's okay, we're trying to figure it out still, so. And we're trying to give it some texture too. So when that paint dries, it kind of has that feel that it's just coming right off the canvas. So now that we have that, let's make that side a little brighter. A little more straight into the yellow ochre. We do have some of that darker on the brush. And what I'm doing is I come back to the palette, I'm just knocking off some of that and we'll come right into that yellow ochre and put that on there. And again, these are fetters, so we're trying to give that texture. Just popping that in, there we go. There we go. And you're picking up some of that black, so you can see when you put it down, oh, it comes right off. So we're putting paint down and picking paint up at the same time. And we're just going to come up and give a little more up at the top there. There we go. Just putting this in. I'm not pressing real hard. The harder you press, the more paint you're picking up. Rotate that over. There we are. And let's do the same. Let's do the same on his head. So knock off some of that darker paint and we'll come up here. Oh, right on Gwai here's head there. And over on that, that wing over there. Again, we're just making it up as we go along. We're just making it up as we go along. Now these were two very important, two very important characters in our story. Without them, would the dwarves have ever, ever made it to Erebor? We know that the eagles changed the fate in the Battle of the Five Armies. We know that without Bjorn, the dwarves and Mr. Bilbo may have never made it through Mirkwood. There we go. Now you have to remember that when you're painting with oil paint, sometimes they'll dull down, they'll dull down a bit. 
after you've painted. But let's clean that off a little bit. What we want to do is we're going to take some of this yellow I'm going to come here and I'm going to take just a touch of this bright red. We'll see about making that. We want it to be mostly yellow, but just a tinge of orange on there for his beak. There we go. See if we can put this in. Now, old Timbo, oh, you know my hands aren't the steadiest. I'm more comfortable painting a mountain rather than something with fine details like the beak of a bird. Ah, polluted by the paint I picked up. Polluted by that paint. See if I can get some of this to stick. There we are. And as it dries, you can always come back. You can always come back and work on these details. And we're going to come and we'll put in these talons here. Picking up quite a bit of that black as we put it down. Now we've got that paint pretty thick there. Oh. I'm polluting my colors. I'm mixing mud. Again, we may just come back later and fix these little details, but we do want to put in the idea of his talons here. And I'm just going to come up some of this Van Dyke Brown and maybe just, if I can, just give a little some serious eyebrows there. There we are. I think we're going to use this brush for old Bjorn here. Put in our bear fur color. That's right. Now we're going to thin that out a bit. There we go. Thin that out. See if we can get that to stick. Because you know, a thin paint sticks to a thick paint. And let's give our bear some details in his fur here. Again, once this is a little more dry, oh, you see, come to some of that yellow ochre. Once it's a little more dry, you can come back and, and put these details in, but like his shoulder here will be a little brighter. That big leg of his. There we go. And we're just going to knock off that color over here. Come back. Get some more of it here. And we'll do his back. His back is going to have the brighter fur.
There we go. And we're just painting in that fur. Washing off that brush, just wiping it off on a paper towel there, and then coming back to it. There we are. And bring this down. He's got a bit of that bear tail going back there. And you can see, there's lots we can do there. There we are. I'm back. Now you can use this brush just to mix it in and then come back and highlight some more. Right under here. That other leg that's back there. Come back to it. Now you can see why the landscapes they go pretty quickly in these small details. Oh, it takes a bit of time. Takes a bit of time to put this in, but if you want to take a whole afternoon to paint this sort of thing, oh, you can, and it's a lot of fun. But you just have to keep coming back to it. There we go. And you just shape that bear there. Now that fur might be a little bright for Bjorn. He was a bit of a darker bear. But you can do this and you can mix it in. You can mix it in a bit. Tone it down. So it's not so orange. But remember, some of that will come off. Some of that'll tone down as it dries. There we are. There we are. Now you can even do a little bit of highlight from the moon in there. Let's take some of that color off that brush. Oh, I dropped my brush. Now remember, you want a light touch on these brushes. You don't want to hold them real tight, but oh, Timbo has a, has a habit of dropping them sometimes and painting the floor and painting my feet. So I'm just getting a little bit of that moonlight color on there. There we go, just thinning that out a bit. And then right across those top edges of his back. And put a little moonlight there.
right on that top edge. Let's get a little bit of that titanium white, just thin it out. And of course, Gwai here as well. Just where that moonlight is picking up. There we go. There we are. Now let's finish off this rock and we can add details in there too. So I'm going to come. We want this rock. There's a stair that leads up there. Hey, then just climb up the side. There's actually a stair. So let's put that in. Let's put that in. We're going to come to our white and let's just mix it up in here. Get kind of a gray, rocky color. There we go. Just pull that out. Don't mix it all together. There we are. So, and we can see right here, maybe. If we get it to stick. Just put in that, those steps right up to the top of that. And what you're doing, you're picking up paint too. So we'll just drop it off over there, pick it up from there. And just come this way. Just think about the angle of your steps. Now this, of course, is the rock that old Mr. Bilbo and the dwarves were deposited on by the eagles. When they left them, they took them out of the danger and then left them there. And they climbed their way down and went and found Bjorn, of course. Now again, I kind of tilt my head because I'm not trying to be too much in your way. Hopefully I'm not. But sometimes that does make it a little crooked for my painting. So I'll try and remember that my head is tilted. And we'll make these stairs come down this way. Just drop those in. There we are. And then we'll put the details on the side of this rock here. And of course, these stairs probably aren't very even. There we go. Now, side of this mountain, just, or these, this Carrick rock, just lightly pull, pull it down. Letting the canvas keep the stony details. It's making it.
Just keep going back and picking up more. There we go. And right on this side, we'll these stairs. Built right into the side of the rock there. Right into the side of this rock. And you're just softly bringing that down. If you want to put some ridges in there, you can even just move your hand a bit as you bring that rock down. That'll give it some shape. There we go. And there we have that meeting between the mines. And now if we want to go back and we want to put, oh, maybe we put some trees back here, make that Mirkwood forest, make it here, just pop in some, some trees back here. Clean off that brush. Then we can come in. Some of that moonlight blue. And just highlight some of the trees there. There we go. Just make that forest. The moonlight hits the top of the trees and that's where it stops. That's where it stops right in there. That is a dark, dark forest. None of that moonlight that is there on top of those trees. None of that penetrates into the forest there. So I think we'll leave it there for today. If you want to add more details, just keep going. Just keep going, you can do that. But I just thought it'd be fun to make that meeting of the minds there. I appreciate you coming along on this adventure and I appreciate you coming back week after week and leaving comments and likes and, oh, subscribing too. So I'll let you to your painting. Goodbye and God bless.